We'll come to this uh, short talk, hopefully, uh, about heart health, heart disease, what is it, and how to prevent it. But before that, I would like to welcome people here and also who are watching online to the, the first uh, medical day at MCC. And I would like to thank the Muslim Medical Student Association for organizing this day, uh, the volunteer physicians who also joined today, and also for MCC staff that made this happen. So thank you all. So um, then to today's talk, uh, we're gonna be uh, just an overview of heart health uh, and heart disease. And we're talking of course here about physical uh, heart medical problem of the heart. Be before we start with that, I'm just gonna, uh, this is a cartoon, just kind of an overview of the, uh, the heart and the blood vessels, the circulatory system or the cardiovascular system. The main function of the heart is to deliver uh, oxygenated blood, oxygen and nutrient to the uh, rest of the body. And the heart is uh, a small, relatively small organ, the size of the fist. It beats 100,000 times on average a day. That's come to 36 million beats uh, a year. So it works nonstop from the day we're, we're like start in, in utero before we're born until, until death. Um, so to do that, the heart has to receive a blood from the uh, body, then push the blood to the lungs and receive, get oxygenated, receive it back, and then push it again out uh, to the rest of the body. To be able to do that, the heart kind of have four chambers separated from each other. There is a set of flaps of tissue or valves that direct the blood one direction. And interestingly, although the, the heart contains the blood, but it can't use that blood for its own use. So it has its own set of a blood uh, vessels. So what kind of heart problem we could think of? So if the heart muscle itself is too, st too weak or too stiff, that's when some people will have congestive heart failure or heart failure. If the, one of the valves is too narrowed or too leaky, that's when you have a, a blocked valve or a leaky valve. And the, the other set of uh, disease of the heart, the, the blood supply of the heart itself, it's called the coronary arteries. And the blood supplies of the heart itself, if they have a blockage in them or a problem with them, that's when people have chest pain, heart attacks, and so on. Other, another set of heart problems, potential heart problems, is electrical issues of the heart. The heart has to beat continuously, as we said, uh, so it has its own uh, natural pacemaker. So if any problem with that, we end up having a problem with too fast heart rate, too slow heart rate, or irregular heart rates. So this is just an overview of the, uh, the heart uh, physiology or normal function. Uh, another uh, word, big word, uh, is atherosclerosis, which is mainly, which means it's hardening of the artery due to uh, buildup of cholesterol or plaque inside the blood vessels. On the right side of the screen, the top panel says normal artery. You can see the, heart, the normal arteries are usually um, thin, if, if flexible. There is no uh, black buildup inside them. So they allow unrestricted flow of blood to the organ supply. If the organ is the heart, then that is the coronary arteries that the supply the heart itself. With people with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, and other risk factors, these small black buildup, cholesterol, which attract inflammation as well, start building up inside the artery and over the years continue to grow until it kind of impair blood flow to the heart itself. And if any of this cholesterol black kind of pierce into the blood flow or reach into the blood flow, it promotes blood clotting and that's when a complete blockage happen and end up with a heart attack. So again, if this process, atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries or a black buildup, if this happens in the arteries of the brain, that's when someone have a stroke, for example. If it's happened in the heart, that's when a heart attack or angina happen. If it happens in the leg, that's peripheral arterial disease, 
or pad when people kind of have pain when they're, they're trying to exercise in their legs. So it is the same process, but it depends where, which area of the body it happens that when we see uh, the, the specific symptoms. Now we're going to focus on the coronary artery disease. Coronary arteries are the arteries supplying the heart itself. Uh, and coronary artery disease is the narrowing of the coronary arteries where the blood supply to the heart is not enough to meet its demand. This can result in symptoms like chest pain, uh, so heart attack, heart failure, or sometimes heart rhythm problem. It is the most common type of heart disease, and in the U.S., about 400,000 people die annually of deaths related to the coronary artery disease. So heart attack is kind of the uh, worst complication or the feared complication of coronary artery disease, and that's when a blood flow to the heart stops completely. It happens to 800,000 people a year. Uh, and when it happens, time is muscle. That's kind of the you need to have the artery open as soon as possible. The longer the artery is blocked, the more damage to the heart is going to happen. Typical symptoms of a heart attack, the most common thing is chest pain. But some people, kind of, that's not the main symptoms. They might have shortness of breath, sometimes discomfort in the back, in the jaws, in the arms, heart pain like symptoms. Uh, sometimes dizziness, nausea, vomiting. So uh, sometimes the does not heart attack does not present with the typical severe chest pain uh, that we, we all know about. So they, the message here, if you're suspecting you're having a heart attack, then the, the, you need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Typically that's by calling 911. So hopefully we do want to deal with treating heart attacks or we will focus on more preventing heart attack. And there's a lot of things we could do to prevent heart attacks. Avoid bad habits. Don't smoke. Uh, adopt a heart healthy eating plan. Manage stress. We can come back to that in a second. Exercise regularly. And part of what we're doing today in the medical day is knowing your numbers. Know what your blood pressure is because Know what's your cholesterol, what's your sugar. Unfortunately, these three diseases, they don't cause symptoms until it is too late. So if you want to wait for someone to feel bad, sometimes it's too late. And get to a healthy body weight is also very important. Stress is recognized more re recently or as a major factor. And if you look at people with stressful jobs, physicians, one of those stressful jobs, you feel that they, the risk of heart disease is even higher with those. So always find a way to manage stress. Now, uh, heart healthy nutrition I mean, doesn't come in one pre uh, prescription. So the idea is to eat a well-balanced diet. Uh, avoid artificial food as much as possible, eat a fresh food, avoid fatty food, red meat, more uh, vegetable, protein, lean meat, or fish. Um, go from refined sugar, refined carbs to whole grains, and kind of have a good mix of uh, food. Uh, the verse uh, on the left side from the Holy Quran, O believers, eat of the good and pure, that we have provided you with and be grateful to Allah if you truly worship him. So the idea is to eat a healthy, balanced diet and for each person that might mean different things. One thing, I mean, the two kind of component in our diet that um, affect kind of adversely the heart the most are the two whites, the sugar and the salt. And the sugar is, we talked about how the carbs, trying to avoid that as much as possible. And the other one is the salt. And a lot of time, people with heart disease, we recommend for them a low uh, sodium diet. The salt, the chemical in, in the salt, the table salt, is the sodium chloride. So the low sodium diet is what we recommend usually. And luckily, most foods are labeled for how much uh, sodium to it. But sometimes it can be confusing. So you have from sodium free to reduce sodium and that could mean different things to different people usually we would want for people with heart disease depending on what the specific condition we're talking about two to four grams a day no more than that and that's not easily we can get over that 
what that end up meaning not adding adding uh, salt to the food at all and looking for ingredients when we buy stuff to make sure they're not high in sodium so unfortunately some patients end up getting some heart disease whether it's a blockage in, in the heart or angina or a heart attack so the treatment, the first step in treatment also is lifestyle changes, so you want to address those two. There are certain medications that can be used to treat, for example, high blood pressure, treat diabetes, treat high cholesterol, and make sure these numbers are under control. And for good proportion of people, this would be enough to control the problem, but unfortunately, uh, some patients will need uh, procedures done. So some probably heard about the stents, uh, balloon angioplasty try to open out the artery and place a stent to keep the artery open and for some people even that is not enough and patients end up needing uh, open heart surgery. The uh, one of the medication we commonly used in, in for, for heart disease is the aspirin and the last few years there was some controversy about aspirin especially in the media so it's not for, for the kind of the medical literature, but in the media. So uh, aspirin, if someone has uh, heart disease, heart attack, previous stint, previous heart surgery, or previous stroke, or the doctor recommend be on aspirin, it is very good medicine and it, we, we use it a lot and it decreases the risk of heart attack and strokes. The only group of patients that it's kind of, they don't have to take aspirin if People who never had a heart attack, a stroke, or bypass surgery, or a stent, basically previously healthy, and they're taking it only for prevention, in this kind of situation, they don't have to take the aspirin. But if you are on aspirin because your doctor recommended it or because you have one of those procedures, it would be very dangerous to stop it without talking with your, uh, with your physician. I think that's everything I have. I thank you for uh, attending, and I wonder if anybody in the room have any questions. Yes. Yes, we'll start with the with the caffeine. I mean, among the many kind of uh, habits or the drinks we we do, caffeine is probably the least harmful. I mean, in fact. A coffee in moderation might be helpful as well. I would say that with a caveat, coffee is not the same thing as the drink you get from Starbucks with 400, 600, and sometimes 1,000 calories in it. So we're talking about caffeine by itself has been shown. Um, I mean, again, with, with when, you do, when studying things like diet and people do kind of, you can't control it very well, but it seemed to be definitely not harmful, but it, and in moderation, it might be helpful as well for heart health. As far as the stents, the stent available right now, they don't have any biological material, so they are the metal platform, and then one of the, uh, a version of the anti medication to prevent cell growth. So it's not, nothing uh, with it kind of come from animal source. So they're, they're kind of uh, halal, if you think it that way. The other question we get about that is heart valves. So we said some of people with heart valve, they need the valve replaced. And for the replacement, it ends up being either a metal valve or a tissue valve. And the tissue valve usually either comes from, uh, fashioned from tissues from uh, cow or tissues from pig. So the one from the pig, if the other one is available and there is equivalent, there is not, the, the, the pig valves are not any better than the other ones. So if you have the choice between the two, then probably the, the bovine one would be uh, more aligned with our kind of religious beliefs. So the question was about how we focus uh, about high blood pressure, but also there are some people who have low blood pressure. Um, and that's, that's a very good question. So there is two group of people or, uh, we have noticed low blood pressure. Either young uh, people or young women, sometimes their blood pressure run in the low side. As long as they're not having dizziness, they're basically not having symptoms and functioning normally, people could have a lower blood pressure in the 90s, for example. And typically, we don't do anything for that. So 
if there is no symptoms and the functioning normally, we end up not doing, uh, we don't give medication to the raise of blood pressure. The other group of people we see that is older patients and they have what we call orthostatic hypotension or low blood pressure when they stand up. There will be blood pressure okay at rest, they stand up, they feel dizzy and lightheaded and that's because the communication between the brain and the heart is slowed down. And that's one of those things, sometimes difficult to kind of to treat, but with adequate hydration and certain medication that we could help it. So it depends on the situation. But as a general rule, if the blood, if, the, if you're not having symptoms, even if the blood pressure is low, usually we don't, we don't treat that. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. And uh, I think the medical day is still going until 6 p.m., is that right? So we we'll come anytime, yes. Until 5 p.m., sorry. So we're still in, at MCC and Pleasanton until 5 uh, p.m. today. Thank you very much.